tonight. Dr. Jeremy is going to bring us some knowledge bombs. Um, there's no need for you to take notes unless you absolutely want to. If you have questions, you can go ahead and drop them in the chat. We will go back and look through them and see what we get. If I have anything that seemed like maybe we should answer it now, Dr. J knows I'll just kind of be like, oops, we got a question. Um, so we'll, we'll take care of that for you. Um, as you're joining in, if you didn't hear Dr. J, let us know where you joined from. I'm from what used to be sunny Arizona, but it has been raining and snowing this year. And it is so weird because usually my air conditioning is on full blast by now. And we are still in the windows and doors are closed because it's cold here. So cold for me, I suppose. Um, so Dr. J, if you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about your background before we get started, that would be awesome. Hey guys, welcome. Uh, my name is Dr. Jeremy Thornton, um, joining you from Southwest Missouri. I've been in practice uh, almost 25 years now, somewhere about then. Um, and um, I primarily uh, work with natural medicine in the area of chronic inflammatory conditions, uh, infections, autoimmune disease. And, uh, and so the curcumin turmeric conversation uh, has been important to me for, for a very, very long time, something I've studied and researched and, and utilized uh, literally dozens of different versions and formulas over the years uh, because I knew that the science uh, was very, showed that it was very special, right? And uh, what I'm going to share with you tonight is that uh, there's a hidden secret about curcumin and turmeric that most people don't know. Uh, and it's probably if you've tried curcumin and turmeric before, likely why maybe you didn't see the benefits that you thought you might. Uh, and there's a very good reason for that. So I'm going to share my screen uh, and uh, share just some information with you. Hopefully, uh, we can get it to work right. All right, is that visible? Yep, we can see oh. it. Okay, good. Uh, so the following information is not intended to replace professional medical recommendations. It's for educational purposes. Um, if you have any following symptoms, you need to talk to your doctor, right? So we have to uh, we have to give that information first. So you've probably heard of turmeric. Uh, if you didn't know, it's the root of this beautiful plant over here called curcumin longa. Uh, so turmeric's the root, and we've known for thousands of years that it had very special properties. Um, uh, up to 6,000 years that we have evidence of it being used. Uh, one of the foundational herbs in traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine. Uh, it's been called the most powerful medicinal plant known to man. Uh, of course, it's been used uh, for health, but it's also been used in cooking uh, as a spice. Of course, it's been used as a dye, uh, which you can attest to if you've ever gotten it on your clothes. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, all the studies, uh, as they've studied turmeric, they found out there's a lot of different things inside turmeric, a lot of different properties inside turmeric. But the special component, the medicinal component, the bioactive component is called curcumin. So curcumin is in the ginger family. A lot of people uh, have heard about uh, curcumin. One thing you may not know is they call it lipophilic, uh, meaning it loves fat, and hydrophobic, meaning it hates water, it's afraid of water, um, which is interesting for trying to get it into our bloodstream that's mostly water, right? Um, and so we're going to talk about some of the hurdles that that, uh, that, that causes. Um, uh, one of the interesting things about curcumin is it's the most widely studied natural substance by far. If you just go into uh, the National uh, uh, Library of Medicine at PubMed.gov, just type in curcumin. Um, this picture here shows over 20,000 publications. Now it's over 21,000. I just looked uh, publications just on curcumin alone. And I always say that, that you know, science would not spend this much time, money, effort on a natural substance for sure, uh, unless it was pretty special. Uh, and indeed this is. So when we look at curcumin effects, these are the main areas uh, that science seems to focus on is its anti-inflammatory abilities, its antioxidant abilities, its anti-cancer benefits, uh, its neuroprotective benefits, hepatoprotective, meaning liver, cardiovascular protective, anti-diabetic uh, effects, uh, immune regulation. Uh, the interesting thing is it can support the immune system and it can also calm the immune system down. Uh, in the same substance, right? And I'd like to have one more arrow over here that talked about its GI effects. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of research on its gut health benefits. Um, if we just want to talk briefly about, about research, we could just go on and on. 
uh, Alzheimer's disease, uh, autoimmune disease, um, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, cardiovascular diseases, atherogenic uh, for atherosclerosis, right? Uh, um, artery disease, um, intestinal barrier function, right? Leaky gut and things like that. Uh, its benefits for uh, diabetics and neuropathy, curcumin and cancer. So uh, we could just go on and on about the research. Um, one of the things we mentioned is its, its inflammatory benefits, and, and all of these are different inflammatory pathways that curcumin uh, uh, inhibits uh, or is involved with. And uh, again, this is uh, we don't know any other substance, um, either prescription, um, chemical, uh, natural, that can do this much with inflammation. Uh, and again, these are just, uh, if we categorize different diseases, uh, we won't go through all of them, but we have lung diseases and skin diseases and neurodegenerative disorders, uh, inflammatory diseases, infectious diseases, endocrine, heart, skeletal, cancer, liver. Um, this is all widely studied and widely published uh, in these areas that we're talking about here. Right, but and now we're going to get back to that uh, lipophilic uh, word we heard about earlier. Uh, this is the hidden secret about curcumin and turmeric that you know uh, supplement companies don't share with you, um, but has has been a struggling uh, point with curcumin and turmeric uh, over the years. Uh, so you'll probably be surprised to know the percentage uh, of curcumin that you actually ingest uh, will ever cross the intestinal barrier. We can get everything to work right here, uh, is 10%, actually usually less than that, okay? So no wonder if we're taking a curcumin supplement that we're not maybe not seeing those benefits. If we're talking about turmeric, um, uh, it's even worse than that because of course, turmeric has got other properties. So uh, it's only two to five, to, uh, maybe two to 6% curcumin and uh, the rest other stuff, right? So if we ingest a 500 milligram dose of turmeric, we're gonna get a milligram of curcumin in the bloodstream, right? Uh, and you can see where the rest of that is going to end up, sadly. And of course, this is well known. If you go into PubMed, like I mentioned earlier, article after article after article says, curcumin does all this amazing stuff, but <laughs> it's poorly bioavailable. Uh, and this article talks about that, and it says that uh, it's been confirmed to exhibit very poor bioavailability with many studies showing very low or even undetectable concentrations in the blood and extraintestinal tissues. Major, major reasons are due to its poor absorption, rapid metabolism, meaning it's just broken down quickly in the body, its chemical instability, and its rapid systemic elimination, uh, again, ending up in the toilet. Um, and so this is well documented. It's been uh, uh, been uh, struggle for scientists uh, for a very long time. In fact, uh, there, there are scientists that have been so frustrated that they've published articles that says, we should quit wasting our time with curcumin. We should just not even use it. We shouldn't study it. Uh, it doesn't work. And uh, this scientist is uh, talking about that. He says, um, one, for one thing, curcumin stability and pharmacokinetics are absolutely terrible. It's less than 1% bioavailable. Its half-life uh, uh, is measured in minutes. Uh, and then over here, um, the scientist says, much effort and funding has been wasted on curcumin research. Uh, again, can you imagine how frustrating it would be to develop a, a very powerful study uh, dosing the participants with hefty doses of curcumin and not even be able to detect it in the bloodstream? Right, and that's what happened oftentimes, again, until now. And that's why we're excited to share this bio-MS technology that has completely disrupted, disrupted the marketplace, uh, the nutritional marketplace, because it has changed everything we thought we knew about curcumin. Uh, it came from research from the University of Hohenheim in Germany. Uh, uh, statistics and, and studies show that it's up to 277 times more bioavailable than traditional uh, curcumin and turmeric alone. It's multi-patented, and uh, this bioMS technology looks something like this. This is the curcumin nanoparticle in the center, uh, and 
uh, then this is the micelle structure that is able to carry the, the curcumin particle easily in water, right? That was a struggle. That's not a struggle anymore. Now, this can easily get into the bloodstream past the intestinal barrier. We saw less than 10% earlier. We're talking uh, over 99% with this technology. Um, and just to, just to give you a visual, this is kind of hard for me to even uh, grasp, but 10 drops of this technology, it would take uh, up to 17, over 17 pounds of turmeric root to try to achieve that in the bloodstream. Um, and even that's not accurate. You'd have to consume that 17 pounds multiple times a day, right? Uh, and anybody volunteer for that study? Um, <laughs> I guarantee you it would, uh, it would definitely be a detoxing effect, right? Um, so this is the technologies they extract, of course, that special curcumin component. They apply the nanotechnology, shrinking it down to less than 30 nanometers. Uh, they apply the micelle uh, structure around it to carry it easily through the bloodstream, organs, tissues, cells, brain. If we look at uh, how small a nanometer is, this again is hard to visualize, uh, but a red blood cell is 7,000 nanometers wide. And our particle sizes of curcumin, we're talking about less than 30 nanometers. Uh, if you were to slice the thickness of your fingernail through a million slices of your fingernail, one of those slices would be a nanometer. That's how small the particle sizes we're talking about. Uh, and so this, this is just a video of the study of traditional curcumin that you would just go and purchase off the shelf, right? Uh, this was a 2,000 milligram dose of curcumin studied over time and, and the amount that was seen in the bloodstream. Um, and so you guys are going to have to scoot closer to your screens to see the peak here at one hour. Right there. Ta-da! Okay. <laughs> Anybody excited about that? Uh, the scientists, I guarantee you, weren't uh, excited about that. Uh, so at an hour, this was the peak uh, of, of curcumin. And then look where it was by two hours. It was undetectable. Um, so do you think we're going to get a physiological uh, uh, res response? Are we going to get a therapeutic benefit from that? Uh, nope. Right. <laughs> so we always hear, well, my mind has black pepper extract in it. it makes it uh, incredibly uh, well absorbed. Uh, not so fast. So this study used the same 2,000 milligrams of curcumin, added black pepper extract. Now, I do admit that this is a little bit more uh, uh, exciting of, of a rise in the bloodstream. But look at the time frame. Uh, this is 45 minutes. Look where we're at by an hour. Okay. Again, look where we're at by three hours. It's completely gone. Uh, and the reason it did that is it slows down phase two detoxification of the liver to achieve that. So it slows down the liver, the black pepper extract, slows down the liver, causes a brief spike of curcumin in the bloodstream. And then, of course, it clears it out uh, once again. My problem with this approach is there's, we, we need the liver. Right? We kind of need it to detox and do what it's supposed to do. Um, and, and people that are taking other supplements, uh, potentially other uh, prescription medications uh, or polypharmacy, which multiple prescriptive medications, uh, should we be slowing down the liver uh, in, in generally multiple times a day? It's not a great idea, um, but that's been the best we've had up until now. This was the best, okay? Now, let me show you what we're doing at this point in time with this technology. Um, this is a study in both men and women. Uh, these, these peaks couldn't even fit on the graph prior, um, so they had to change the measurement to be able to see the peaks of the curcumin in the bloodstream. But what's more exciting than the levels we're seeing here is the time frame. Remember, by two or three hours, depending on which version we were talking about, uh, it was gone, right? So here's the traditional curcumin down here. We can't even see it come off the baseline, of course, because we've magnified it so big. Um, but look at the time frame. We're here four hours, eight hours, 12 hours, 16 hours, 24 hours. There's still measurable amounts of curcumin in the bloodstream 24 hours later. We've never, ever seen anything like this before. In order to see levels like this in the bloodstream, we would have to uh, physically inject curcumin into the body, right? And most people just aren't willing to do that daily, right? <laughs> so um, this, and we're achieving these levels from 10 drops of this bioms technology um, and this is, this is a single dose, achieving these levels um, uh, for an entire day. Uh, and that's, that's, to me, is just remarkable. It's just incredible. And this is exactly why 
you can see why we weren't seeing the benefits prior, right? And you can see why we are seeing the benefits. Uh, this is what I say, I always wished curcumin could do, but never seen it do before until now. And now we're seeing that come true. We're seeing those benefits uh, uh, almost daily uh, in our um, health and wellness group. Uh, so it's not about how much curcumin you take, but how much is absorbed and how long it stays in your bloodstream, organs, and tissues, right? And I love to end with just a visual. Uh, I'm a visual person. And, uh, and this is um, traditional curcumin extract powder. This would be your typical curcumin capsule, you know, poured into water. Again, this is why they call it lipophilic, hydrophobic. You can tell this doesn't like water very well, right? Uh, this is our BioMS technology, and that you know that's really all you need to to know. <laughs> that's how well it's absorbed uh, in our bloodstream. So anyway, I could blab all night. You can tell I get fired up about uh, this stuff uh, because I've now been able to utilize this uh, in practice for uh, about a year and a half now, and the things that I've seen um, is just mind blowing. And, uh, and so I, I want as many people as we can share this with, I want them to know about it. So I'll pass it back to you, Julie. Thank you. Um, it doesn't look like we have any questions yet. So that's, that's a good thing. That means what you're saying is making sense, right? So if you do have questions, you guys go ahead and drop them down below and we can get them answered for you. Um, and if we can't get it answered during the Zoom, we'll reach out and we'll get you the answer. Um, there's one thing I wanna add right, right now. now, whoever invited you tonight, I wanna make sure you get with them so that you can get into our group. So we have a group on Facebook where customers um, like yourselves are sharing their testimonies, right? Because not everybody is the same and there's different ailments or different things that you're looking for you can search in that group and maybe find the answer um, that you might have in the back of your mind. Like, will it work for my arthritis? Is it gonna help with my knee pain? How about my gallbladder pain, right? Um, we've got so many testimonies, so many amazing people who just want to share their story because they have been using it and they're just like, are you kidding me? I was one of them. I sat on it for a few months and I'm not sure why yet to this day but it'll never happen again. Um, so with that, we do have Ro with us. She is going to share her story. Um, sometimes these make me cry. Sometimes these just make me so giddy and excited because it's just that zest for life comes back, right? So Ro, um, let me go ahead. Oh, you're unmuted. Perfect. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself and share your story with us. Hi, thank you so much, Julie. Thank you so much, Dr. J, for inviting me tonight. Um, briefly, I, it's hard for me to be brief because I'm Italian and I like to talk, but I will be brief tonight. Um, I love the drops. I was introduced to them um, in January and um, I thought to myself, I'll try the drops. I will be patient with them. If it takes you know, a few days, a few weeks, a few months, um, to see some results, I'm going to be patient. So with that said, after three days, I found significant results. I was walking my dogs down the street. I'll never forget. It was a sunny, beautiful day. And walking down the, uh, walking down the street, I realized my mind started to clear. Um, and I didn't know what brain fog was. I, I you know, I, I, I think everybody says it, but I didn't know what it was. And I didn't realize I had it until it was gone. And so that's what happened with my brain. It just kind of like cleared. And then my eyes were seeing clear physically. And then I realized that through the days, um, you know, in the future that my, my mind was clear. I was focused more. I was um, doing things in the house that I was just like kind of putting off. Um, so, uh, my energy was there. Uh, so mentally it was, it was crazy. It was just like a, a trip, you know, it's like a trip. And then physically, um, I was sleeping better. I woke up more refreshed. Um, the dreams are absolutely ridiculous. Um, just really real dreams. You're like in there and you can remember them. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and then physically my pains through my body, 
were basically gone. I, I would try to cramp up, you know, sometimes my legs would cramp up when I got to bed. And this time I'd stretch out my legs and there's no pain. And I'm like, what the heck? And then I would do it again the next night. Like, where's the pain? And, you know, it's, it's gone. So each night I was like really hesitant to stretch out my legs, but um, believe it or not, the pains were gone. Also in my back, um, in other di different parts of my body, like my hip, that pain was gone as well. And um, I feel like, you know, I, I'm quoted by saying, I feel like I'm in a 20 year old body and I, I that's how I felt. Um, the third thing I want to tell you is, um, you know, mental, physical, emotional. Um, sometimes we take things too personally and people keep on saying, don't take things too personally. And we don't know how we don't know how to get there. Well, with the drops, it made me less emotional, less triggered. Um, and I, I now take things less personally, which really is, is really nice because you're in a better mood um, and you, you feel happier, you know, and a lot of times I'll just be in this happy mood and I'm like wondering what the heck is going on? Like I'm smiling for no reason. Um, so that is my story. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> thank you, Julie. Well, thank you for sharing your story. I love it when I hear that. I'm in the same boat as you, I feel like I'm in that most days about, I would say probably about 90% of those days. I feel like I'm in that 20 year old body again, then you overdo it. And you're like, Oh, I'll just take some more drops so I can get back to that 20 year old body. So that's the beauty of these drops though, right? It's, it's, not amazing. Just it's just not limited to those 10. So if you go out and you do overdo it, you just take a few more because it's not affecting anything. Right. So, right. And, I, and I would say one thing, um, if, you know, if those people who try it and it, it might take a while, don't, don't give up. And I know someone else is coming on after me. They'll say the same thing. Don't give up. Keep on, you know, just having those drops because it will work. My story is a lot different than yours. Um, it took me, oh, well, about 45 ish days before I noticed, but, and yeah. that's, that's the other part about being in the group. And I know that you're in the group as well. Um, it shows that it does take time for different bodies. And again, I, I, I keep trying to stress that because I've walked around with 46 years of inflammation in my body. So I have inflammation in my lungs and I've walked around with it my whole life. And did I really think it was gonna disappear in three days? I had no expectations, right? I knew that it was gonna take time for the body to heal. So when people hear your story, they're all on board and they're excited. And then they hear mine and they're like, oh, but does it really work? Yes. Sometimes it just takes a little longer, but um, thank you so much again for taking the time and sharing your story. And hopefully you get to enjoy more of those sunny walks with your dogs. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ro. That was awesome. Um, <clears throat> and that's exactly right. You know, our body has its own healing priority list. I try to remind people that, and it's not always what our priority list is, right? We have an idea of what we want to see, and, and that's what we want, want it to, to experience. And our body says, well, you know what, this is more important. I'm going to work on this first. Um, but you know, what, what gets super exciting is that on a regular basis, we hear people say, um, I've got my life back, right? That's, that's the term I've heard so many times. Um, and, you know, when, when we get into a bad place in our health um, and maybe we're, we're in chronic pain and chronic inflammation, uh, maybe we are overweight, um, we've, we're, we've, we're fatigued, right? We have all of these things working against us and we're told we just need to eat less, we need to move our body more, we need to exercise and everything will be magically better. But you, you try to exercise, right? And then you're down for three days, seven days, <laughs> trying to recover from the 30 minutes you tried to exercise, right? Uh, and so that makes making those, those positive changes very difficult because you don't feel good, you're tired, you hurt. If you try to do something about that, you hurt worse. Uh, and so it's easy to lose hope. Uh, and what I'm seeing uh, over and over again is when we start to remove that chronic inflammation and that chronic pain, um, the person starts to feel better, they start to feel hope, they start to get more active. They are able to exercise finally uh, and not have to be down for, for days following. And when you're feeling better, you're more active, you have better mood, less brain fog, um, you're, you're, you're going to make better choices, right? And, uh, and it's easier to make those better health choices and those lifestyle choices. And so um, it's definitely something that uh, has provided hope for a lot of people.
Absolutely. Well, does anyone have any questions? If you do, you can raise your hand. If you know how to raise your hand on here, I'm trying to look and see if I see any hands in the air or any, I don't see any questions in the chat. Oh, somebody's got a question. Hello, iPhone. iPhone. Yep. I oh, see is it, I don't know, is it, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear can. you. Okay, sorry, my name is Roxy. I literally just found out about this 20 minutes ago and I saw that there was a call. Does it help with Hashimoto's? Oh, we have an amazing story in our group. Um, and if you go, are you in the disruptive wellness group? I just got in it, yeah. Okay, so in the top corner of disruptive wellness, you are able to search. There's like a little magnifying glass you can look up in there and you can type in Hashimoto's. Um, okay. You're going to look for a post um, specifically from Kylie Stokes. So if you okay. want to Kylie, K-Y-L-I Stokes. Um, okay. Her story is amazing, but there are other stories in there about Hashimoto's and how it has helped her tremendously. So um, it, go ahead and search in the group. But yes, to answer your question, she talks about it all the time. It's her husband's on here shaking his head. Absolutely, yes, it's changed her life. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for your time. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah. Looks like we have another question on here. What age do you recommend for children or babies? So, um, Dr. Jeremy, I can answer this because I use them on my granddaughter. My granddaughter is six. Um, she's been using them for a year now since I, well, over a year, um, but it's one drop per age up until they reach the age of 10. And then you can do the 10 drops. Um, and again, you're going to want to play because smaller kids might need a little bit less of a dosage than the bigger kids. Um, so you can just start with a drop and see how they tolerate it and then increase as necessary. But um, I wouldn't exceed if they're five, I would not go over five drops. Um, if that's not right, I believe that's correct. Right, Dr. J, are you there? Yeah, that's right. Okay. And then we also have, what about long haul COVID? Um, iPhone, I don't know your name, sorry. Um, in our group, you have several folks that have talked about um, long haul COVID. Dana um, talks about how she had not been able to taste, smell. It was causing a multitude of issues. Uh, depression, right? It, all the things. Um, she talks about how she started using the drops again, not expecting much, and she got her life back. So you have to read Dana's story. So, so you can um, check that out in our group as well. Cats, uh, one dose or one drop per 10 pounds. So 20 pound cat, two drops. It does make things yellow. Um, so if you can get it in a treat or put it on something, um, there's a picture in our group of a cute little doggy with a yellow mustache. Uh, it's adorable, totally worth it. Oh, let's see. Yep. Safe for all pets, migraines, lots of stories Sue, If you're in our group again, in the right-hand corner, when you are in disruptive wellness, there's a magnifying glass. You'll just search that and type in migraines you're going to see a lot of different results. And we also have a question and answer, or uh, it's a question and answer, I believe, section now where you can get into there and you'll see people are asking questions and then there's answers below. So yes, you'll be able to see that as well. How about the dose per 10 drops? I believe you're like, what is the dose? Like, what is the milligrams per the 10 drops? Is that the question? It's from Concetta. And then a three-year-old, yep, it would just be three drops. For a baby, um, there's a lady that talks about teething and she would just put it on her finger and rub it on the gums. So I, it, you could do that. And Dr. Jeremy, what's the dosage? I, I guess she's wanting the equivalent dosage of the 10 drops. That's like what we take, but. Yeah, yeah. Well, remember, we cannot compare apples to apples with uh, typical curcumin. So most curcumin uh, products are using thousands of milligrams, right? We saw what 2000 milligrams did in, in that one uh, slide. Um, we are only using 33 to 36 milligrams, I believe, depending on the version, um, to achieve that. That's 10 drops. 
And yes, it's amazing for the teeth. Um, apparently this baby just wouldn't quit crying, wouldn't quit crying. So they just took it. They were like, we got to do something. They rubbed it on the gums. And in like minutes, the baby was just out asleep in a good way, but just the pain was gone. They had calmed down their nervous system. So yes, you guys in that search box or up in the top corner, if you just pipe in whatever the ailment is, um, you'll see allergies, you'll see asthma, you'll see arthritis, you'll see pretty much everything. I think at this point we've covered like Lyme's disease. So it just goes on and on and you can search it in there. No, it does not stain teeth. I am vain. I like my teeth nice and white and I take it, I take the drops, um, just straight. So this is, I, I brought my bottle. So I just take the bottle and about a third of the dropper is equal to your 10 drops. So then I'm just going to take this and I just put it in my mouth. Now it will make your tongue and your mouth a little bit yellow. It goes away because turmeric has been used as a teeth whitener. Um, but it's amazing for your oral health. It's amazing for your oral health. Um, and yes, if you don't, I'm too lazy to take the time to count out 10 drops. So I just put about a third of the dropper in my mouth as you see the comments. Um, but then that's it. And I just kind of let it sit in there for a little bit because it's just absorbing. And then I can rinse it down with water, but no, it does not stain your teeth. It will stain your um, furniture, your clothes. So you want to make sure you're careful with it. I mean, there are things that will get it out, um, but yes, it is amazing. All right, I don't see see any more questions all right you all get with who invited you get into our disruptive wellness group it's a great community where we uplift and support each other um we let you know like if there's sales and things like that going on we want you to make sure you're completely aware of all of that so we keep that all in a group um that way you guys are in the know and then if you have questions you can drop them in there one of us will get to the answer um, for you. So if you don't have any other questions for the night, thank you so much for your time and joining us. Dr. Jeremy, as always, it's amazing to have you. Thanks, Bye, guys. guys. Thank you. Thanks for hopping on.